everyone can make sound. Working with sound relaxes us, helping to release stress and tension, to balance the mind and create inner harmony. For thousands of years the power of the human voice to calm, heal and inspire has been recognized by all cultures throughout the world. Instinctively, mothers sang lullabies to soothe fretful babies. Monks chanted in meditation, and people bonded to each other and the rhythm of the earth as they sang work songs. In the increasingly left-brained technological society of today, most of us have lost touch with this unique human ability. How to rediscover the power of your voice to heal your own life and the lives of those around you to release emotional blockages, to unlock your own healing potential and discover the true beauty of your unique sound. Hello and welcome to Healthy Lifestyle. Since birth we have been carrying with us an amazing instrument, but we are sometimes not even aware of its potentials. This amazing instrument is our voice. We are going to discuss it with our today's guest, Shirley Roden, a well-known singer, author and therapist. Shirley, welcome to our show. Hello, Dr. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about healing with the voice. Mm -hmm. Some people can simply say we're going to talk about singing. And a lot of people consider themselves not good enough at singing or yes. that they have no pitch or something like that. Mm -hmm. Would you say that anybody, even those people, can use their voice in order to heal? Absolutely. And one thing I make clear about my workshops is they are not singing workshops. Because singing uh, usually brings up the feeling of competition in people about whether you're good or whether you're bad and who is better, whether you can do it or not. I'm just getting people to make sound, what we call sacred sound, so that we can vibrate the cells of the body with the sound to help ourselves relax and let go of old feelings and tune ourselves up into a higher vibration, as it were. So I absolutely say you don't need any experience and even if you haven't sung for years and even if you were told in school or your family are always saying, shut up, that's an awful sound, it doesn't matter because it's just about making tones and, and not about being perfect. How does voice healing with the voice work, what happens inside our bodies when the sound comes out from us? Well, it's, it's the vibration, you know, we, we are pure vibration. If you put ourselves under the microscope, you'd see this, everything is moving around and they say that everything is emitting sound. Um, even the dark holes in space, apparently, I don't know how, but scientists have tested them and they're vibrating with the sound of the note B flat. The earth is sending out a tone even in this moment, although we don't notice it or feel it or hear it. Um, so everything is vibrating sound, but it's a question of vibrating back into perfect sound, into harmony really, because so much in our life now has become disharmonious. In the years, you know, in centuries before our ancestors were out on the earth and they're working with the natural sounds, so they're in tune more with the sound of the earth, with the sounds of nature, of the wind and the rain and the streams. You know, people don't very often sit now by the water and listen to the sound of a waterfall, which is incredibly peaceful and healing. And we're vibrated with all these more, more and more mechanical sounds. You know, there's always the sound of machinery and cars, airplanes and music. And um, I read a really interesting thing in a paper in England last week where a student in London actually died from the bass vibration of speakers at a rock concert and he was pushed right the way down the front and the vibration, the bass vibration, was very, very loud and actually affected his heart, uh, killed him. <laughs> so, you know, vibration, sound vibration uh, is very, very strong. But of course, what we're doing is we're, we're working in harmony. We're creating harmonious sounds, vibrating the cells of the body. I like to think of the cells of the body like like snowflakes. So when we're born, they're this perfect shape and this perfect pattern. But as we go through life, things happen to us and there's pollution in the air and the foods we eat and all the emotional crises we go through and everything becomes a bit 
distorted, you know. So when we're working with sound, it tunes the cells back into this perfection. There was a Swiss scientist called Hans Jenny, and he actually uh, experimented with sounds. He made a drum and he put different substances on the top, like sand, water, paste, and he vibrated these sacred sounds from beneath on the drum and, and created these perfect patterns. There's a whole book of his photographs. So it's kind of proven that this, this sacred sound will bring you back into perfection. So I'm trying to get people to really tune the cells of their body back up. So that is what is actually going on inside, inside our cells, inside the body. Yes, and also the other thing is that scientists have proven that uh, every cell of the body has a coating around it, a membrane, and that's hold memory. That holds memory. Memory is not just in the brain. So we have memory all over the body, and I kind of think it's a bit like a computer. You know that when you've got things you don't need on the computer any longer, you press delete and it goes into the recycle bin. As we go through life and things happen that the growing child or the young adult can't deal with, we press delete because we have to move forward and we want to forget those memories. And the recycle bin is the body and we need to empty those old memories from the cells because they're still controlling, they're affecting the way we're thinking, the way we're acting, they're affecting our life. So. It's a bit like we're, we're like an onion, you know, there's layer and layers and layers that you can peel off until underneath you find the real you. And what kind of changes can be observed instantly when someone tries to heal themselves with voice? I think the, the main thing is the relaxation. Uh, when we make these sacred sounds, it vibrates, there's a, a band of nervous fiber across the top of the brain called the corpus callosum, which connects the right and the left brain. And these sounds, the sacred sounds, apparently vibrate the corpus callosum and connect a stronger connection between the two sides of the brain, which puts you into alpha waves, which is relaxation. So it's quite extraordinary, really. You know, within five, ten minutes, I get people focusing on their breathing and then making sound, and then they relax. <laughs> if we are trying it at home, is it enough we are simply, if we're simply singing one's favorite song, or is it better to chant or to use special Well, I like to encourage people to do anything and everything, however you can use your voice, it really doesn't matter. Um, when I was a child, I used to spend hours in the bath until the water got cold, singing and singing down this, this we call it the plug hole in English, where the overflow water goes because the echo was so nice. You know, bathroom and showers always have a, a good acoustic for singing and people can't hear you so much if you feel embarrassed. It's just good to use the voice. Of course, from my point of view, because I work with sound, Sound. Um, the best for me is when you follow your breathing, calm yourself down, get pull, put yourself into a state of calmness and more relaxation, and then make the sound. And I teach people to focus the sounds into various parts of the body to really connect and vibrate. But chanting is also wonderful. Uh, there are some fantastic Sanskrit chants that you can use, um, or you can you can chant in any language really, but Sanskrit was an alphabet which was particularly created with these sacred sounds to vibrate areas of the body. So I also teach people chants. Uh, and chanting is a good way to release feelings as well. Because, you know, sometimes things happen and we can't express them, we can't communicate them. So I get people to put all that feeling into the sound, let it go with the sound. I remember there was one really funny time when I was working in Croatia at the Harmony Project. And um, I focused the whole group, I had a very large group, and I focused the group to make sounds for about five minutes to just let go of all their feelings, all their anger and frustration. And all this incredible sound came out, you know, and then we made calm sound and, you know, gently filled ourselves up with this feeling of peace, which was great. But um, the next day there's a monastery next door and there was a, a small complaint from the monks saying, could you not make such terrible sounds, please? It was really disturbing. But, you know, sometimes you have to let go of the feelings so you can find the peace. Uh, this frequent singing, like in a bath or when doing the dishes <laughs> or wherever, yeah. does it also improve our voice as an instrument and maybe also our ability to sing, our pitch? 
Yes, yes, the voice is an instrument and it's a muscle like anything else, so the more you use it, the better it gets. And in fact, uh, Agnieszka, who organizes me in Poland, when I first met her, she hadn't used her voice at all and was very worried about making sound in the workshops, very self-conscious. And we've been working together for nearly three years now. And her voice is really strong and clear. Uh, and it's amazing, you know. And, and this wasn't from having singing lessons. It was just from breathing deeply and making the sound and just keeping on making the sound. And I do say to people, make the sound wherever you can. If you're walking, you know, outside in nature, it's a lovely place to make sound. I also do chants when I'm stuck in the traffic or if I'm standing in a queue at the supermarket or the bank, I'm sort of chanting away under my breath, you know. You can use sound and singing and chanting at any time. And it's just really wonderful to use. And it changes your, the vibration of you. It lifts you, it makes you feel better immediately. And it, you know, has a very healthy effect on the body. When we're feeling stressed, apparently, um, scientists again have researched into this and showed that when we're feeling stress, the DNA in our body sort of clamps up, you know, tightens up and uh, doesn't flow so easily. It affects our immune system as well. But when we're uh, unstressed, you know, um, the DNA apparently opens and widens and everything flows, you know, and our immune system is affected. It's, it's more positive for the immune system. So it's really good to, I call it raising our vibration, to lift our vibration higher with the sound. Is it also beneficial if we're singing or making sound only in our minds? For example, if we're in a crowded room or in a place where... Yes, you can make silent sound, yeah. And sometimes I do that if I'm on the underground train in London, which is very, very crowded, you know, completely cramped. Uh, some people, you know, don't like being in, in squashed spaces. It frightens them. And I just sort of say, just make a gentle sound and surround yourself with that sound. Or if you're in a situation where someone is really panicking or in pain or there's been an accident or something, just silently send them some sound. And I also, um, sometimes I will silently send sound across the world to someone else if someone needs some help or someone needs some healing, I just visualize them. If you're not in a situation where you can make the sound out loud, then just feel the sound inside you and send it to somebody else. What is usually treated with voice therapy? Are we talking about, you mentioned just sending energy also to a friend in distance, mm -hmm. or are we dealing also with emotional problems and maybe even physical pain? Yeah, um, well, I deal a lot with emotional problems. I get a lot of people coming to me who have unresolved fears or problems from childhood, and we work with the sound to connect to the original memory, because as I said, we hold those memories in the body, uh, and it is possible to connect to those memories and release them. So I work a lot with emotions, and but sometimes emotions uh, can really cause physical pain in the body. I remember having one woman who couldn't lift or move her arm at all, and she'd recently got divorced. <laughs> and when we worked with the sound, all this anger came out, you know, and then afterwards, amazingly, she could move the arm and she'd been for massage, she'd been to the doctor, she, you know, it's just that our, our mind really does affect the body, you know, so I'm working really to, to help release old patterns and old feelings in the mind, which will then release the body. I have also worked quite a lot in England on people um, who have cancer or who've been uh, for chemotherapy because that can make people feel really dreadful and I find that gentle sound can really help to relax and calm people down. Can there be any negative side effects of voice therapy for the therapist or for the patient? Can anything go wrong? Um, I don't consider that things go wrong because part of the healing process is that sometimes you can get worse before you get better, especially when you have a big release you know, it can make you actually feel very shaky, it can make you feel tearful, it can make you feel sick. But all of those things are, are, are effects that will pass. And to me, it's just helping the old memories and the old feelings to lift out of the body. So no, as a therapist, I'm always very clear that I don't take on what I'm working with. Um, I, I always work with my guides and guardians, and I always uh, pray before I begin to strongly connect to what I call the source of all that is. People call it God or 
uh, divine, the divine presence, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Some people, you know, call it working with angels, but I connect to that source of energy, so that is flowing through me. I never feel it's really me that's doing the healing. I'm just like an an open channel for that energy to work through. So I don't have any bad side effects, but I do believe in the healing power of water. I always shower at, at the end of the day just to clear the energy completely. Uh, and so far, touch wood as we say in England, I haven't had any really bad situations with people. As I say, when, when, when things get worse, it's sometimes part of the healing process before they'll get better again. So I do explain that to people. And sometimes people will experience real physical pain in the body as the memories are releasing. And sometimes down one side or the other side, because left side of the brain controls right side of the body, and the right side of the brain controls the left side. So sometimes people will say, I'm really feeling pain all down my left leg and my left arm, you know, why? And I'm saying, well, because we're working with unblocking the receiving part of you and the right side of the brain is receiving, receiving love, receiving nurturing, and they will actually kind of feel a pain as that moves through. I worked with one woman in England who had um, chronic fatigue syndrome, ME, and she was so exhausted that she could not even finish peeling a carrot, you know, that would exhaust her. And we worked for some months every week, I used to come and work with her, and she said it hurt but she felt as though everything in her body was slowly clicking back into place, click, 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 it was reconnecting, but it hurt as it was happening. But by the end of us working together, she could get up and get dressed and drive her car, and it was amazing. And, you know, she had made a conscious decision, because there were very difficult things happening in her life, she'd made a conscious decision to shut down her heart. She said she didn't want to feel any longer, because, you know, it was so painful. But of course, the heart is the main organ of circulation of the body and the life energy. And so we might think, oh, I'm just going to close down emotionally, but it affects our physical body. People don't realize that. And as I traveled around Europe, I realized people are becoming more and more stressed. You know, all this technology and emails and phones and mobile phones and texts were supposed to help us have more free time. But it just makes everything go faster and faster and faster. So, you know, in the old days where you might write two letters in a day and post them, now people are dealing with 50 or 60 emails in a day. Can you do a short demonstration for our audience (laughs) on what they can do at home, maybe to release stress or... What they can do at home? Uh, Okay, well the best thing is to sit with your back straight, as straight as you possibly can, your feet flat on the floor uh, and close your eyes, so I'll do that with them if they're watching at the moment. And then I always get people to focus on the breath to begin with, that is just connect with the breath coming in through the tip of the nose. As you breathe in, follow the passage of the breath down the throat into the lungs and breathing in and out till there is nothing more, just the breath in and the breath out. And next time you breathe in, just imagine the throat is growing longer, like a channel of air that goes all the way down to the base of the spine. So you breathe in to the base of the spine. And as you breathe out, just letting go of any stress, any tension, just gently releasing on the breath. Breathing pure, clear energy all the way down to the base of the spine. And as you breathe out, just gently letting go of old feelings, old memories, old ways of thinking and doing and being. And this time as we breathe in, when we breathe out, we're just going to make a sound and let go of those feelings. So breathing in. So again, we breathe in and making a very gentle sound and just let go of your frustration and your tension and your fears. Breathe in. And just one more time making a sound to let go, breathe in. And just 
just focusing your attention now into the heart. Imagine there's a beautiful pink lotus in the heart and you can breathe in through the heart. So just imagine now you can breathe in and out through the heart center, breathing in pure light, breathing in compassion and love. And we'll make a very gentle sound now using the sound O. And just make a gentle sound, a relaxing sound, and calm yourself down. Breathe in. And again, breathing into the heart. Just visualizing your breathing in soft pink love. Breathe in. And as you breathe in, just feel that sound and that energy, that pure, loving, pink, relaxing feeling spreading through the whole body from cell to cell and out into your aura, surrounding you in pure pink light. And taking in a deep breath, gently open your eyes and slowly come back. <laughs> so it's very simple, really. Very, very That's simple. <laughs> Thank you. So. Basically, we can do this every day to just really stress. Yeah, just use the sound to you know connect with your stressful feelings, your fears, your problems, and let them all out. And then find another sound, a calm, peaceful sound. Focus it into your heart center, and just make that sound and feel that sound going around the body. And you can do that for as long as you like, either the releasing sound or the calming sound, just as long as you feel is good. Is that maybe also a way to protect ourselves from? harmful sounds that you were talking about in the beginning. We are surrounded with these vibrations of mechanical... Yeah, I think the thing is not to be afraid, you know. I think the energy of fear is such a strong energy everywhere and it's pushed upon us by the media, by the press, by the, by the television, by the politics, really. Be afraid, be very afraid of everything, you know. It's really interesting because there was such um, publicity about swine flu in England, you know. And it was like, you know, it's going to be terrible, it's going to be worse, it's going to be really awful. And some people did die, it's true, but uh, I think all, pretty much all of them in England were people who already had medical problems. And then two weeks ago, in the middle of the paper, there was a little article saying, swine flu hasn't been as bad as we expected, you know. So I think the thing is just to stay positive, to use sound to stay positive. And I always uh, envisage a, a spiral of light around me at any point where I feel, you know, that there's something that, that, I, that I'm not too keen on, that I don't want to invade my, my space. I just envisage a beautiful spiral of light around me, like a protective spiral. But at the same time, I don't like to buy into fear. I think it's, you know, just know that you're healthy and you're fine and everything will be all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's also good advice. Yeah. <laughs> well, Shirley, thank you very much for joining us and for sharing your insight into the world of voice and sound. Thank you. Whether you are amongst those who claim they can't sing at all, or among those who consider themselves excellent singers, it is never too soon or too late to start using and reaping the benefits of the magnificent vocal instrument that you have. Thank you for watching and goodbye.